Hello and welcome everyone to this very important video. And as you probably have heard, MIT came out with a study that shows that AI might be in a giant bubble. And we want to cover that topic today and figure out, are we in a bubble? Is all of that imagination and are markets crazy to pump that much money into AI infrastructure, into AI startups? And are companies like Nvidia, like Tesla, Microsoft, like OpenAI, crazy to invest that amount of money into AI? And will that bubble, if it is one, burst and destroy all that value that we're seeing reflected in the stock market? So let's dive right into it and see what this Gen AI Divide State of AI in Business 2025 study of MIT actually says. So I'll give you a very quick summary. We don't want to go too deep into all the details because this is all about the big takeaway of MIT and the big headlines we have seen on CNBC and all over the place and on YouTube. Oh, the study looked into 150 executives, surveyed 350 employees and looked at 300 individual AI projects in big businesses. And it found that 95% of AI pilot projects failed to deliver a discernible financial savings or uplift in profits. In other words, and that is the headline that we saw all over the place, 95% of AI pilots, or as they put it, AI investments yield and delivered zero ROI, return on investment. Now, what should we make of that? Is AI a bubble? Is it all hype? And does it not deliver any value? You saw the stocks actually dipping when that study came out. I think Nvidia and some others dipped. The fear was great just a week ago. And we have to understand a little bit more how this actually works, right? What is the investment cycle? How do companies actually go into doing these pilots? And what pilots are we actually looking at here? What is the timeline of things? And the real AI picture, well, first let's go into that a little bit because I can give you an example. I know a hospital, large hospital in the United States. I know the leadership pretty well, you know, from, you know, some stuff I did with them. And they told me about the AI project, I think a year ago, roughly a year ago, no one had any clue about anything. Their board told them, hey guys, you need to do an AI project. You need to be AI ready, what's your strategy? So you have these boards who are mostly totally clueless. They're sitting there, they're calling in the executives, the CEO and the leadership and tell them, dudes, have you heard about AI? It's this new thing, what's your strategy? And then, you know, the executives say, well, we don't know what that is, but we will come up with a strategy. They call up the usual suspects, which is not the people who understand AI, but the people who are best selling to corporations that they understand what to do with AI. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. We are talking about Accenture, McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, or in the case of the hospital, I think I shouldn't tell you who exactly it was, but it was one of the very large hospital infrastructure providers and technology providers and very large company, similar to GE. And they told me, well, they hired this company to implement an AI pilot into the hospital. And it's pretty much the same as saying like Accenture or Boston Consulting or McKinsey is implementing your AI strategy. And I was like, oh, the probability that you will see zero percent ROI, zero return on investment on this product is a hundred percent because people like that don't know anything. Why, why would McKinsey know how to implement anything in AI? They don't know AI. They don't understand it. So we have to understand in a wave like this, in a giant technology disruption like this, of course, corporate America is going to look at it and say, oh, we need to do something. And then call the usual suspects and the usual suspects will of course fail. But does it mean that AI is failing? No, it means the first cycle mental cycle of ai has failed as expected because that's how it goes because they implemented ai probably started planning and implementing it mid of 2024 maybe beginning of 2024 when ai was vastly less advanced than it is today and what's going to happen now is actually something very interesting so let me first go into why i believe the popping of the ai bubble will not happen because there is no AI bubble, because AI is one of the most foundational transformations that will pay off actually much faster than previous disruptive technologies. So what is the big picture in AI? 
AI actually delivers real value on a massive scale because it introduces intelligence to businesses, technology-driven intelligence that previously only people could bring. But I will go into an example in a second that will make it very visceral. In order to bring that intelligence into an ROI mode and framework, right, into something where you can actually monetize that intelligence, you need to figure out what to do with that intelligence. And that is something that is dependent on the individual business logic. If you are a sausage factory, how you deploy AI and how it you know, cuts costs or increases revenues or does whatever is totally different from a hospital, of course. So you need to figure out what would you actually do with that intelligence and only the business can figure it out. And after this first wave of failure with comparatively inferior AI compared to what we have now and dumb consultants, the business will see, ooh, this didn't work out, but we learned a bunch of stuff. Maybe next time now we should actually use the new AI, which is much more advanced and use our own logic to understand what the hell is going on here and how we use it. So I'll give you one example, which is Lovable, one of my favorite AI companies, because we use it now internally. Lovable is a system that allows you to basically code or develop product, right? So it's kind of a, a, a front end coding system. And I can just show you the, the website very quickly here. So this is a system that allows you to replace front end UX and UI coding. So it looks very cool. You can just type in here what you want. I have all my secret projects down here that I can't talk about right now. And uh, these people grow like crazy. And they're saying actually 80% of their users are enterprise and very sophisticated people that build complex applications. And once you start using Lovable, it's like having a whole team of developers and UX and UI designers and front end coders and middleware coders, all kinds of stuff. So this is just one example. They just raised the largest series A round in Europe ever, 200 million at over a billion valuation. It's an amazing company. And that's just one example. And the impact just that one company has on the entire product innovation cycle across all industries is insane. And it's growing like insane. So just on the software production side or product development side and app development side and software, which scans, you know, spans across all industries, we are seeing a massive, massive disruption. And what that means for us, we analyze AI is, you know, the real deal that AI unlocks, not in the future, but today is that it allows everyone to go into their business and reimagine the entire business and having an army of high IQ workers especially on the coding side, by the way, and the UI and UX side, where you can restructure your entire business. If you want to restructure your sales department, you can now do that. You can think, what is my sales department actually supposed to do and automate everything and create these new applications that your existing Salesforce can then use. If you talk about operations or manufacturing or supply chains, you can just tell the AI, figure out what the hell is going on with my supply chain or in finance, analyze this stuff, do it automatically every day and present a dashboard to me. All of these things companies have to learn because they're busy confronted with unlimited high IQ workers that cost nothing. And it will take a year or something to figure out how to actually use them. But we are already in a year or we will be in a year roughly with that capability end of this year. And what you will see then is a total transformation. And I have something very catchy here to understand the paradigm you're dealing with. I will have a separate video on that that's a little bit more uh, interesting on the political level with some commentary on mass migration. But I think a very useful and intuitive way of understanding AI is that AI is like importing a billion Chinese at 125 IQ from elite universities in Beijing and Shanghai, and you just import them all into your country. You don't have to import them, they're already here in the form of AI agents. And they cost you 40 bucks a month. And guess what? That's a billion smart Chinese fresh from college, 125 IQ for 40 bucks a month. But you also have another billion Chinese that costs you 200 a month with a 135 IQ, right? The ChatGPT and the, the expert models. Only that they're actually not Chinese, of course. I'm just using that to, you know, show you how that, you know, to give you something to think of. Oh, you have unlimited smart labor that do all these things. They are invisible and they don't need housing. What would you do in that situation as a CEO? What would you do as an entrepreneur? What would you do as a job applicant? What would you do as an employee? Because this here is the actual situations we are now facing. And I really mean it. We have to understand that AI is basically a labor equivalent 
a high IQ labor equivalent for white collar jobs. Of course, there are tremendously negative consequences for anyone who is an employee or is looking for a job, but there are also tremendously positive consequences for entrepreneurs and CEOs and investors. I'm not casting any moral or ethical judgment on this whole thing. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just telling you what it is and what you know opportunities arise from that. Definitely not many for employees and none for new college grads who are looking for employment, but infinite amounts of opportunity for those, for the college grads who say, you know what, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to build something or I want to be creative or a CEO or an entrepreneur, because now you can go out there. Imagine you have to really think this through. It's like you're going to Home Depot and instead of, you know, a bunch of people offering their cheap labor for dragging stuff around for you, there are all these high IQ college grads who are willing to work for you for 10 bucks a week. Say, I do whatever you want, any analysis you want, any math, you want any legal work, any medical work, anything. I can write you up anything. I can research anything in lightning speed. I can code you anything in lightning speed. Just pay me my 10 bucks per week. And I do it. And of course, technically for 40 bucks a month, you're not getting one of them. You're getting as many tabs as you can open in Chrome and copy paste your grok in it or chat GPT. So that is what AI actually is. We need to understand this. It's like getting a billion smart Chinese grads imported into your country, only that they don't need housing and they're invisible and they cost 40 bucks a month. What does that do to an economy? And I tell you, here's the funny thing. If you do that, if you do that, you will find out a lot of things. You will, for example, find out that if you are a company, you're a middle manager, whatever, you know, suddenly it's like, oh, you know, for 4,000 bucks, you can hire a hundred high IQ employees now. You will be surprised how long it takes actually for that manager to show any ROI because it's not that easy. I went through this and it's actually not that easy to use smart labor and have it become productive because an IQ of 125 does not mean that they're sitting there and reinventing your business. You need to do that. You need to tell them what to do. You need to tell them, I need that report. I need that coded. I need this and that. And they will ask you, but what exactly do you need? And then you need to come up with what you actually need. And if you're a corporate manager, you're not trained to do that. You're not even trained to handle that amount of power, but you can learn it. You can learn it by doing it. And that is why we see a lack and delay in the ROI of, of AI, not because AI is stupid, but because we are too stupid to actually use this new capability, but we are not that stupid and we are going to learn it over time very quickly. Otherwise we get fired from our board or whatever. So here is my prediction about this whole thing quickly about the IQ import curve, by the way, that's an important aspect. I forgot here the IQ import curve. What I mean with that, here's the IQ and here's the timeline. So what I mean with IQ is these models become smarter. So in 2024, when you actually started the study, the AI you had was probably IQ of 90, right? But then in the next quarter, it turns into 95. You're talking about ChatGPT, you know, two, and three, and O3, and O4, and ChatGPT5, and Grok, two, and three, and four, and so on. The MIT study wrapped up around here at right? Q1 2025. Uh, measured it, right? So they had an average IQ of 100, these agents, these AIs. Now we already had 125 minimum. And so not only will the corporations and organizations learn how to deploy that IQ, but they will also get much higher IQ and it will incrementally improve or significantly improve every single quarter. So, you know, there's a time lag, but there's an exponential effect. And my prediction is what's going to happen here in very rapid order. We will go from 95% of companies saying there is no ROI on our AI pilots to 95% to inverting that and 95% saying not only did we get overwhelming ROI, we turned that into a survival condition and without AI, we would die. And this will happen by end of next year. It's already happening all over the place with companies, but by end of next year, I think it will have completely flipped from 95% saying no ROI to 95% saying we cannot survive without this anymore. It's a condition of survival. Long story short, unlimited high IQ labor, which is exactly what AI is. Unlimited high IQ labor is not a bubble. 
In fact, it's the biggest game changer we have ever seen in the history of economics. And that unlimited high IQ labor is not future AGI theory. It is something that is already the fact today in medicine, in law, in anything related to business and finance, and most important of all, coding and front-end product development. Because that coding front-end product development is the ultimate key lever of all economics and reality engineering, because anything, any company, any government, any organization is a function of the software it runs, because the software determines what companies actually are and what the processes are. And now you can just snip your fingers and get them. All you need to do as an organization is learn how to do that. You need to become a reality engineer. That's why you should go to pioneerlands.net because we are gathering there. Everyone who understands this and I was like, wait, wait a moment. This is crazy. We have unlimited labor here, unlimited intelligence. We need to learn what to do with this capability so we can prepare for that new future and we can shape the future. So I hope that was interesting. Now you know why I think we are absolutely not in a bubble. We are at the very, very early innings of a complete transformation and there will not be a big lag here like in the internet uh, you know technology disruption or in the mobile disruption this time this is going to happen very very quickly i hope that was interesting see you next time